what do you do? Uh, does uh, I? Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome back to the studio. Today we have a laundry list of questions <laughs> from one of our awesome, awesome peeps out there, Alan. We adore you. Yes, we do. And I love your well thought out, well worded questions that get my gears turning. Okay, so let's just go over the the. the our question comes from Alan York. Hey, Alan. Hi, Alan. And Alan listens to our podcast, watches our YouTube vids, and follows our blog. Oh, and very awesome. Is awesome at communicating with yes. us. Alan had just watched your latest rant. First, I'm going to basically say what what the meat and potatoes of this question is, okay? Right. The mm, meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes. <laughs> can you end up hurting yourself or making trouble for yourself and having too much inventory. Alan starts by saying he used to manage in retail and basically they had a concept diagnostic system called turn basically, which right. was, uh, how is your turn on goods? And if goods are not moving in retail, often you mark them down to try to move them or you have to look at it and say, well, is there an issue here? Well, yeah, because you turned them out. Alan, I would have to say that when it comes to art, you can't really quantify it the way that you would quantify goods, goods right. in, in retail. Uh, with art, it'd be more along the lines of uh, being a wine connoisseur, right? So, like, you buy a certain wine, and you know that the longer that you keep that wine, the more uh, valuable it becomes. So, it's not really like you're, you know, and I think that that's one of the things that a lot of a lot of artists get mixed up, because uh, they'll do something like compare their pricing to stuff uh, that sells at, like, Hobby Lobby or one of those places. Gross. That, and I'm like, <laughs> listen, you cannot you cannot compare your work. Your work is not product. Your work is original art. Yeah. And so, like, those pieces, you just got to look at those, that kind of stuff that's, like, product out there that people are marking down 50% because they're doing exactly that same thing. You got to look at that as placeholders. Those are placeholders for real art, and maybe that person doesn't even know that they're a collector yet of original art. That's happened so many times. Yeah, it's happened so many times with me. It's almost like a gateway drug into becoming a real collector. And I've known so many people that now, that although maybe their house is full of that kind of art, now they pride themselves because everything that they own is an original piece from an artist. If you have room for it, you're doing okay. Yeah. When you start running out of room, then get get more space or that, that's, figure something that's out. That's where Clea and I disagree. I don't think that you could ever run out of room. With as little space as we have here, I know that I could probably fit another 300 paintings in here you somewhere. You probably could, which yeah. is, uh, let's, let's go into Alan's next question. Okay. I know you have a large inventory of paintings. <laughs> yes. All assigned a certain retail price and maybe a private cost price. Do you worry about goods that haven't sold in a particular time frame as a retail buyer would and take a markdown on old inventory do you factor in turn on other words and no. the short answer is no no because oftentimes uh, actually what i say is like if i've got a piece for a little while it's because its person hasn't found it yet yeah and it doesn't make it less valuable that's, the way that i look at my art is like this um that's money in the bank mm -hmm. maybe it's not in the bank right now but it's on its way there because eventually the right person, the person that that artwork is meant for is going to find it. And sure, it might take two years, might take three years, it might take a month, it might take a week, it might take a day, but that person is going to find it eventually. So all of that art is an investment. It's almost like Alan pre-read what your mind because his next question <laughs> is, does it bother you that your inventory, in your inventory, you have a significant number of paintings that total up to a high inventory dollar value? They're an asset, of course, but generally in capitalistic business, owners, managers want a low inventory level and a high turn number to justify to them that they're pricing their goods correctly and that they've made popular picks to fill their stores with wanted goods. Yes. So, um, yes, they're all assets. No, we're not worried about having them here. And I would say if you are 
selling nothing if it's crickets, you've literally not sold any of a series or any work at all, then maybe take a look at your Maybe market. Evalu- evaluate your market, evaluate yeah. your pricing, just like I said in that, you know, like yeah. it might be something that you have the pieces priced at, something that you're not comfortable with. And so like you're pricing yourself outside of what your comfort zone is. Um, but if you're happy with the price, be willing to hold on to it because what... It ages like wine. It's not, it's not milk. Consumerism is all about the next new product. So like, um, people want to sell the iPhone, uh, the newest iPhone now before the next one comes out because then in like three years, it's not going to be worth anything. The price goes down, decreases. Uh, tremendously. But it's so, so like, not the case for our... I work in metals and the price of metals just keeps going yeah, up. Yeah, gold price <laughs> has been going up. You got to realize like a lot of these companies, they are required to include the inventory as a uh, part of... Because they make over 100000 or I forget what the amount is, but they have to make over a certain amount of money. $1 million. Then, $1 million. You yes. have to make $1 million and then you have to keep uh, track of your inventory because mm-hmm. that's part of your profit and loss. And so a lot of times it benefits them to put stuff on sale because that stuff that goes on sale is non-taxable. That's one of Alan's other questions. But before we get into that, I want to say, Alan specifically, I've had series that I'm really, like, I really feel them, you know, like I really enjoy creating them. I like how they look and they're not getting any traction at first, Right. but I enjoy making them. And that's the important thing to me. And I've had series like series that I've had for a couple of years that start getting traction a couple of years in. And and certain pieces that maybe don't get attention during this time, but then they do get attention. I've also had series that were hugely popular, low cost and easy for me to make, that people would say I'm stupid for discontinuing them, but I wasn't feeling them anymore. Yeah. So it's really more of an emotional game. Got to get rid of the chasing money aspect of the art. Money is not the reason that you're creating art. Right. You know, money is great because money gives you the opportunity to purchase materials and create more art and all that stuff. So obviously we all want to sell something, Mm -hmm. but when you're chasing the dollar, uh, your, your motivations behind some of the decisions that you make and the way that you look at art actually hinders you. So for example, somebody who's chasing money, who's concerned about having that inventory, they're going to totally underprice their piece. There's nothing wrong with doing a sale if you feel like doing a sale. Totally. Uh, let's say you need more room. You're like, I need more room and these, you know, 15 pieces need to, need to go now. That's fine. If you are doing it out of the necessity or the need because like, I'm not selling any of my art. I need to put these on sale. I've seen a lot of artists that hinder themselves in that way because, uh, they make decisions out of desperation because they're desperately trying to make money and it just works against you in the long run. It always works against you in the long run. And that's why I say like, listen, I get it. You want to make some money with this, but that cannot be your focus. You have to do it for the reasons that are true to you, which is, this is why I create this art. I would add to that. I think it's also okay to run a sale because I need to generate some revenue right now, yeah. but that be careful with that because I see a lot of artists trap themselves in that mode. Well, that worked. So now I'm going to do that all the time. And now people are going to expect that from me. And you trap yourself in this cycle where you're constantly sale, 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 yeah, yeah, everything and, must and go. You don't want to do that. I want to do the Facebook live sale. Mm-hmm. And what I want to do is give people a discount that show up to the live. Yeah. Right. So like, that's where, that's the only place where I would use a discount because it's like, listen. As an act of gratitude. Yeah, as, a, as an act of, thank you for showing up. Holy crap, you're here. Because you could either buy it on the website whenever it is that you want, or you could endure an hour of, of us, meet, bumbling, of us around. bumbling around and talking, <laughs> and then you're going to get a discount. Nothing wrong with the way that retail does things. It's just the motivation behind it is not applicable all the time. Yeah, it's the difference of looking at art versus looking at product that needs to move. Yeah. So Alan's next question is about taxes. Can can having too much inventory hurt you at the end of your year? Like, are you better off with a high inventory or is that a tax problem you want to avoid? 
if you're making less than $1 million annually, and if you're a small business, chances are you're doing taxes as the cash accounting method and not the accrual accounting method. Yeah. And um, while some businesses choose to do their inventory and use that at tax time, and we don't do that, so we're not going to do tax advice <laughs> on that. No. Our inventory does not affect us yes. negatively or positively as far as specifically taxes are concerned. Yep. If we start making making a million dollars annually, that is something we will look into yeah. for sure. A lot of businesses will do that because if they get a loan or something like that, that that counts as income, whatever yeah. your assets are. You know, when you hear somebody say like, so-and-so is worth $5 million, mm -hmm. those assets, that's what they're talking about. It's not actual cash monies. It's the things that yeah, you own. Exactly. So yeah. like at this point, we would be, you know, Rafi is worth, he's a thousand air. <laughs> I am a thousand air, you guys. <laughs> Ultimately, what Alan wants to know is when he starts building his inventory, his prices might be high as an artist blacksmith, which is cool. Good. And it's cool to be a blacksmith. Yeah. Um, and also good because don't undercharge for your work, Alan. Yeah. So anyway, building an inventory of higher price goods to sell, am I making trouble for myself? No. No. And if you choose to also do goods that you can move more quickly that are at a lower price point to supplement that, that's totally cool too. Yeah. But don't ever feel like you're taking a huge risk putting beautiful, large, expensive works of art into the world because you want to create them. Yeah. I have stuff that basically covers all the price points that I'm comfortable with. So I make sure that I have series and things like that that I could create that are much easier for me to create. And that way I could have something that, or, or prints or things like that. That way I have stuff that people that maybe can't afford one of my more expensive pieces can buy some of the stuff. I don't, I don't exclude any um, economic uh, thing. If somebody wants to buy a super expensive piece, I've got expensive art. Somebody wants to buy something that isn't going to set them back, I've got that art too. I think it's important that when you're, when you're thinking about these things, that you're thinking about people. Cause really it's not, it, again, it's not about the money. It is about the relationships that you get to build. And so like if everything that you have is really, really expensive and can only hit one market, then you're excluding, uh, possible relationships that you might have in the future absolutely and if you just if you only have like super uh, uh low uh, price things then you're also excluding another another potential market there's also crossover there i've had people that saw my stuff bought a lower priced you know piece from me because that's what they took home with them that day and then later on commissioned yeah. a, a big fancy piece yeah. because that's what they had in mind that they saved up for yeah. and so you want to be able to establish those relationships and really not exclude people and that brings me to an awesome conclusion that I'm having now which is there's a lot of ideas out there in the business world and the art world that look good on paper, that mm -hmm. seem logical, and you try to relate them to what we do, and all of a sudden it just falls apart because this really is about relationships, and yep. it really is about communication, and it really is about people, and that's hard to quantify on a sheet of paper. Oh, it is. With any formula or any system or any method. It is. That's why you blaze your own trail. Your career, your art career is completely based on you, who you are, how you want to do things, and the way that you communicate to the world. Some business book says that this is the way that you're supposed to do business. It doesn't necessarily make it true for you. Or so. even previous life experience in corporate America. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff we did in corporate that I definitely do not do in my business. Alan, you are a wonderful, creative, talented human. I love the questions that you ask us. And I love the way that your mind works. Yes. And I, I will love to continue to see the progression of what you do. Thank you, as thank, always. Thank you, Alan. For the food for thought and the conversation that came from it. What would I ask? And I'm curious to know what... Um, 
how you guys feel about your art inventory. Yes. And uh, and how you feel about moving it and how you feel about sales. Yeah, that's a <laughs> lot of questions. Just just write something in the comment section if you feel like sharing it with us. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. You guys are absolutely freaking amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios. Adios.